Okay guys, uh, today we're going to rejet this quadrajet. Now first, we're not going to rebuild it. In fact, you can look at it and see that this thing is real clean and uh, doesn't need a rebuild. In fact, this one came from Sean Murphy and I can tell you now, it is really well built. Everything is good and tight. Bushings are done. Uh, it's just really well built. The problem with it is that it's really rich. In fact, when you're idling or even when you're just cruising along, you can smell gas on it. Which, when the motor was brand new, I was okay with being a little rich. But now that it's broken in and uh, ready to, to run generally, it's just rich and we're going to do something about it. Now, I've been in and out of this thing quite a few times uh, over the last few months jetting and rejetting and in fact most recently threw some number 70s back in it so I could go on the hot rod power tour uh, and I because I'd just rather have the car a little rich than a little lean for a big 2,000 mile run like that but now I'm back and we're gonna get back into fine-tuning this thing and get it down to where it actually needs to be anyway here's a couple things to pay attention to first thing is See that little lever right there that comes to your uh, choke? When you we get to taking this thing off, you want to make sure and not disturb that if you can. It's hooked down to another part way at the bottom. Now if you do unhook it, uh, it's not the end of the world. You can retrieve it. Just a little frustrating to get down in there. This one, we're kind of lucky to have this big wide space right here that allows us to just drop it through there when we take the top off and we won't have to disengage it. Uh, next thing is getting the accelerator pump off, which is this guy right here. Now you're going to see right in here, hopefully, there's a little roll pin in there. And that's what is the fulcrum point in that. When you punch this thing through, you're going to want to make sure and leave a little room back there so you can get your screwdriver in there and run it back through. Don't punch it all the way through. Don't punch it to where you can't get a screwdriver in there. All you need is out long enough or far enough to get that accelerator pump out. So anywho, let's get going. And the first thing you're going to want to do when you get started on this thing is getting your secondary metering rods out of here the first thing just do it now they're going to be kind of in the way and you don't want to scratch them up or bend them or mess them up while you're doing this thing now these things have zero to do zero to do with your cruising, your 30, 40, 50, even 70 miles an hour. They just don't come into effect. This has everything to do with wide open throttle. It doesn't come in, nothing happens until this linkage is about halfway back. Now just doing the math in my car, that's about 5,500, 5,500 RPM, which again, doing the math is over 100 miles an hour and I'm not going to be cruising over 100 miles an hour. So this is a not this is a secondary concern. Once you have the primaries set up, everything runs the way you want it, you like everything, we'll start messing with these. Now just by the way the carb is done, I'm pretty sure these are a little skinny, consequently a little fat mixture and I'm probably going to change those at some point, but that point's not today. Uh, if you're kind of Neurotic like me, first thing you're going to do is put that screw back in there so you don't lose it. Now we're going to get this accelerator pump out. Now all this is right here is a little finish nail. Cut the tip off of it, filed it flat so I can get this thing out of here. Push this back in here as much as you can just with your screwdriver. Then put this little guy right on it this one happens to fit right there so that all worked out pretty well
tap it on through until it comes loose. And there it is, it's just loose. There's no other way to get this thing out of here because of the way it's bent. So when that comes loose, next thing is taking this thing off. This is just the choke arm. It's really simple, it's really straightforward. Again, you just want to kind of be careful because you don't want to have to dig this little arm right here back out and through everything. And again, you get in here and let your uh, neurosis take over and put this screw and this arm back where you got it so you don't lose everything. The next thing is we're, we're just going to open this booger up and I'm assuming because you've, you're savvy enough to get this thing from the car to the bench that you have uh, seen screws loosened up before so I've taken a good deal of them out so we're kind of ready for that right away. I left these in here so that the top didn't slip while I was loosening some things out here. Now one of the things you're going to see is right down here in the throat of your primaries there are a couple of little screws. There they are. See those? They're different than these in that their flatheads are kind of spread at the top and the reason is so when you loosen these things up they don't fall down in venturi and get caught up in your manifold and consequently your motor. So just pay attention to them. They're there. That's where they go. Put them back in that spot. And uh, me, I kind of have that four eye syndrome so I'm going to take a little set of needle nose here and pull them out so that I don't just drop them anyway. Put all this stuff off to the side, out of your way, but note that this is all where it comes from, what it's for. is just going to pop free and the reason is because I prepared this upper gasket with a little trick I'm going to show you a little later well I'm not going to show you you've seen this or probably have seen it it's a neat little trick it's one I learned from my good friend Neil Stringer and once I heard of it I couldn't believe that I had gotten to the age that I am and never thought of this because it makes perfect sense and it works like a charm this gasket right here before you put it on well number one make sure you got a good one number two before you put it on put a coat of white lithium grease on it it'll sit down in there you can put this thing back on if you have to come back out that gasket is still good it's still usable you haven't torn it up it hasn't shredded it hasn't burned itself to the carburetor you're good anyway we're gonna pop this thing out and the biggest thing is just make sure you kinda keep an eye on that don't let it disengage. It'll slide right through that little horn. There you are. First thing you're going to see is these guys. Don't bend them. Don't let them be loose. Just kind of check them. You know, if they're loose, give them a little tap. Just make sure that they're in there. They're solid. These are fine and dandy. There's nothing wrong with it. So we're just going to move this over so we don't bend it. Now, there's the accelerator pump. There's a little squirt of gas for me. And we have it out. First thing you can see here, this one is blue. There are blue ones, there are red ones, there are black ones. Don't use the black one. The black one is just rubber. Now there is enough ethanol and gas these days 
and ethanol and rubber don't mix. They don't play well together. It can, it will, uh, disintegrate on you. So get the blue one or the red one. If it doesn't come in your rebuild kit, you may uh, just give it back to the guy telling him you don't want it. Or you may have to order this thing separately, but, but don't get that black one. Get the blue one or the red one. Those are the good ones. Put that off to the side. Here's the next tricky part. This right here is your metering rods. Those little guys right there. They move up and down in the spring and it all depends on the vacuum down in the manifold that the carburetor is seeing. That adjusts your part throttle response from the carburetor. You do not want to bend that arm or these rods in any way, no how, no shape, no form. Take a lot of care to make sure that you do not bend them. The difficult thing is, is this gasket has to fit under here, close it completely, and the first thing you see is that's not going to happen. The gasket has a little split in it right here and right here. Those things will separate and it allows you to get this thing out. It's a little tricky. It can uh, make you want to uh, bite your cigar in half, but that's just the way it is. What I do is just lift it up a little bit, push this down so that it separates. Now I've kind of got my hand on it. This guy will then come right over the top of those arms without touching or bending anything. Slide it forward, and you have done it without bending or messing anything up. See all this white lithium? That's why I can take this apart. Not one scrap of that gasket left here or on the top. And I'm going to use this thing again, too. It's a good one. Just get a good quality one, not just a paper one. Get a good quality one, and you're good to go on it. Now, next thing is getting these metering rods out. Right here at the top is a little collar. Some of them are staked with a little piece of metal, but most of them these days have that little collar right there. And you can just reach in here, push this down just the tiniest amount, reach under it, pop that collar, it comes right up. That thing is loose, it's free in there. Take these straight up. Don't mess with them, don't crimp them, don't snag them. Pull them straight up without bending anything. Anything. And there you go. These metering jets here are 41Ks. A lot of your jet and metering rod numbers had to do with the size of them. These are the two steps. This will slide up and down in here and it controls how much of the gas gets through that jet. At full cruise, when everything you have plenty of vacuum, this thing is seated all the way in there and it closes off a lot of that jet so you get a lot less gas and you're wasting a lot less gas. The minute you step on it, vacuum leaves it jumps up along with your accelerator pump and this you've got gas for accelerating moving along when the vacuum comes back up high pulls it back down you're back in cruise this is the genius of a quadrajet and a quadrajet I think I personally think is the best carburetor ever built street performance carburetor you're gonna get some argument on that but that's the way I feel about it in fact I can hear the Holly guys carrying on right now. And my only question to the Holly guys is how many power valves have you had to replace? That's what I thought. Now this little block here doesn't really serve any purpose other than to take up space so you don't have a whole lot of gas in there or more gas than you need. Pull it out, set it to the side. Here is your float. And this thing, I know, already is set to the right size, or the right height. Do not bend it coming in or coming out. Just take it straight up 
your stopper, your plunger is going to come right with it. Everything is one nice little piece. Don't bend it. Be careful. That's over there. Everything at this point is good. We are down to where we need to be. And what we're going for are the jets that you can see right there at the tip of my screwdriver. That's it. We're just going to change those. Like I said, they're currently 70s. We're going to drop them down to 67s because that's kind of where I left off before I went on the power tour. And we're going to work from there. These things here, when you're taking them out, you just are putting them in. You just want to be careful. You do not want to strip anything in here because it's not like you can throw a Healy coil in there and revive it. It's going to be a booger if you strip anything. Be careful. Just twist it out slowly. It's easy. That's going to take a moment or two. I'm going to turn this off. Well, now I'm not going to turn it off. We're going to keep going because it just doesn't take that long. Take that thing, twist it there, it breaks. Twist it a little bit more, that breaks. All you're left with now is just taking them out. And again, I've got four-eyed syndrome, so here we go. There they are. Those are the 70, that's one of the 70 jets. Here is the other 70 jet. You didn't think it was going to be all this simple, did you? It's incredibly simple. These things are easy to work on. They're easy to deal with. People who tell you that they're monsters are generally people who don't know how they operate or how they operate <laughs> and how to operate them. They're simple. They're great. I love them. Now I'm going to uh, take a minute here. I'm just going to uh, get the other jets ready. I'm going to wipe down this uh, lithium here and uh, kind of get this thing ready. I'll be back in just a second.